I want to talk about the attributes, the attributes of the House of Acts. The three most prominent attributes of history makers, follow me, are courage, persistence, and God's faith for others. Courage, persistence, and God's faith for others. And so I want to talk first about courage. And if you turn to Joshua chapter 1, we're going to, talk, we're going to read um, the whole entire book of Joshua. No, I'm going to read part of Joshua 1. And I want to kind of set up for you what's happening in the book of Joshua. God encountered Moses at a burning bush. You remember this? Or we should say Moses encountered God, because I'm sure God was in his life long before he knew it. And Moses encounters God. He hears the audible voice of God. I've seen the oppression of my people, and I send you Moses to deliver my people. Do you remember this? And the Bible goes on to say that Moses became a friend of God. He spoke to God. In fact, in, think in the Hebrew, it's mouth to mouth or face to face. He saw wonders and signs and miracles. His staff, remember he threw down a staff, it became a snake. You remember all the miracles that, that Moses did to release the people of God from the Egyptians? Do you remember all this? And you know, he came before Pharaoh with his staff and he threw it down, it became a snake and it ate the Pharaoh's Egyptian uh, uh, magician's snakes and, and he, he caused you know, all kinds of famine. He, he just parted the Red Sea with his staff. I mean, this is Moses, the man who's the most famous man in the history of the world at the time. A man who speaks to God face to face. A man who's a friend of God. A man who God commissioned him audibly from a bush. And this man could not take the people of God into the promised land. <laughs> and so God encounters, Mo, uh, encounters Joshua in verse 1. Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot shall tread, I have given to you, just as I spoke to Moses. From the wilderness to this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, as far as the great sea, towards the setting of the sun, will be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I've been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you, but be strong and courageous. For you shall give this people possession of the land, which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Don't turn from the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Don't tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I love this chapter, but we, let's put it in context. God is saying to Joshua, like I was with Moses, I'll be with you. And I'm thinking, um, Moses died before he fulfilled his mission. And you're going to be with me the same way. I don't know if that's good or bad. And how many understand that God empowers Moses to bring the people into the promised land, and Moses can't get the people in the promised land, and here Joshua, his servant, is commissioned to take the people into their promised land. I want to point out a few things. The first one is, is that Joshua is, Joshua's success, according to God, is measured by the fact that the people get what God promised them. So God says to Joshua, I promised them a promised land. And you are going to get them in their promised land, and you are going to make your way successful. And how are we going to know that you're successful? By the fact that you make everyone else's dreams come true. This is your commission, Joshua. This is your mission, that you would be strong and courageous, and you would be successful. What does success look like? That you take the people and you give them the promises that I told them that they should have. Now, before we go on, I want to say this, that why couldn't Moses take the people in the promised land? Do you remember in the New Testament when Jesus was out, up on the Mount of Transfiguration? Who was up there? Moses and Elijah. Why wasn't it like Abraham, the father of faith, or Enoch, he walked with God and was no more? Or how about David, who was 
called the man after God's heart. Why was, why was it Moses and Elijah? Because how many know that when, he were up on the, when they were up on that mountain and Peter, James, and John were there, you know, if there was Ringo, it'd be a band, right? <laughs> and Peter says, I think we should build three churches, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Jesus. Do you remember what happened? A voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son, what? Listen to him. How many know that Jesus, the, the law and the prophets were until John, but how many know that Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets? Why were, why were Moses and Elijah up on the Mount Transfiguration? Because Moses represented the law and Elijah the prophets. How many know Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets? How come Moses couldn't go into the promised land, but a guy named Joshua had to take them? How many know the name Joshua, the Hebrew name Joshua, is the Greek name Jesus? That Moses, the law, couldn't take them into the promised land because the law can never get you in the promised land. It always, it can get you out of Egypt, but it can't get you in the promised land. 